Hello and welcome back to the Joyous Journeys in Life and Business podcast. I am very excited uh, to have with me the beautiful Amy Taylor Kabaz. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to be here. It's fabulous to have you on the podcast. And I know that some of my listeners do know that there's been some exciting things going on behind the scenes that we're going to talk about today. Um, But for those of you who don't know Amy, let me introduce you. As a producer with more than 15 years experience at the ABC, Amy brings the research and dedication of a journalist to the passion of an anthropologist and coach. Since 2013, she has trained as an internationally accredited life coach, postnatal yoga teacher and meditation facilitator. With an honours degree in international studies and a graduate certificate in international development, focusing on on empowering women in the developing world, she has always been focused on women, why the world values them in a particular way and what they can do about it. In 2020, Amy created Mama Rising, a facilitator training program empowering women to work and support mothers around the world in her unique insights into matrescence and how to take the research and to and support mothers differently. Amy, welcome. It's such a privilege and an honour to have you here. Wow. When people read your bio back to you, it's always a bit, not awkward, but it's like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for reading that yeah. whole thing. <laughs> it's always a beautiful mirror, isn't it? It is. And I think you see threads Again, like remembering back to the study I did at uni, I know a lot of people listening to your podcast are really looking at businesses and entrepreneurial journeys. And I love how we see that even though the job we used to have might not be the job we have anymore, there's a path there somehow. Like that was all leading to this, even though we didn't know it at the time. And so listening to that description you just gave, that stood out to me again, like, yeah, it was there all along. That's why I'm here. Absolutely. It really is, you know, sometimes we do end up on this entrepreneurial journey in places and spaces where we think, how did I get here? And yeah. this is this is not what I imagined. And it, often it's, you know, it's the breadcrumb to lead us to the next thing that is always That's it. incredible. Yeah. I mean, if someone had told me I would be running a coaching schools, a coaching school, training women to how to coach mothers, I would have probably freaked out and run away but um you know now I'm here and I look back and I'm like yeah of course this was always where I was heading yeah I I can definitely feel that for you um and also in my own story you know it's like of course this is where we should end up it's just you know it, it is um and I mean it's interesting because we actually met several years ago in a fleeting moment I don't even know whether you remember when we met but I do <laughs> but we I met do. at Camden Wellness Expo organized by the beautiful Charmaine Newmark and mm-hmm. and it was just we were both uh, we both had exhibits there at, at that event and you know Amy and I met and I just remember having the most amazing conversation in and it was such a, it was only a handful of minutes but gee I enjoyed that conversation and I followed you and watched your journey ever since um, and and just absolutely admired the work that you've done in this space which we're going to hear more about today so I so, love that. I don't know. Do you remember what year that was? It was 2019. Oh, really? It was March 2019. Wow. I would have thought it was earlier than that. And again, I know we'll get to the questions you want to ask me, but again, <laughs> that just reminds me of all the different things I did and I tried before right. I got to this point, like yeah. expos with stalls and selling things and right. all the different things you try out at the start. And I think... We often don't talk about that that much in the entrepreneurial space. We make it feel like you have to know what you're doing and you will stick with that right from the beginning. But, oh, my God, no. I was all over the shop at the beginning. It was like throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what will stick. That's how it was. So, yeah. (laughs) 100%. And, you know, that's one of my favourite ways of explaining this to clients is often you know often when they'll come to me and they say oh I want to do this and there is that point in time on this journey where it's totally 
appropriate to say, you know what, it's your time to hurl some spaghetti at the wall and step back and see what sticks. It's mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful thing. And, and I guess, you know, exactly the same. I was there in that space doing something that I'm not so much doing of these days, um, you know, working at expos and things like that, which I loved doing. Um, but it was all a part of this beautiful path, you know, that that was you know, having us come across one another and, you know, and other amazing people like Charmaine, who I'm, you know, I'm still friends with to this day and absolutely love her work in the world. It's just incredible. It is just incredible. I love that. Yes, you never know. You never know what comes out of those things. It may not be a million dollar business from an expo, but it's a conversation. It's yeah. one, for me, it's one mama who picks up my book that you don't know where that ripple effect will go. I think it's both terrifying and exciting to be at that very beginning space where you mm -hmm. are just trying everything. Mm -hmm. And you may feel like you're not heading in the right path, but actually you are. And then one day, just like me, when listening to you read my bio, I'm like, yeah, wow, it did all lead here. <laughs> it's <gone laughs> Even the circle. random expo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway. I love it. So, so look, you know, I, I just want to touch on for people who aren't familiar with the word matrescence, which is very, very common. I find that when I use that word around, people are like, my what? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just address that because there will be people listening and, you know, particularly women listening to this who don't know what that word is. Can you just firstly, before we begin, just orientate people to the, the meaning of that word? Yes, I think. The best way to understand it is if I, I could just spend a few minutes describing my experience of becoming a mum. Please because, do. Because I think this is the best way, as I said, to really ground into the theory of understanding of it. So my eldest is 14 years old. And as you said, before I became a mum and for the first few years of motherhood, I was a journalist for the ABC. And I decided I wanted to be a journalist when I was eight. I absolutely knew that that's what I was going to do. And I grew up like so many, pretty much every single one of your listeners, I grew up being told I could do anything, you know, that this career ambition was who I was. There were glass ceilings to be smashed. There was ambition to be chased. The harder I worked, the more successful I would be. There was also this sense of, I don't need a man. You know, I build my own success, independence, the wonderful um, results of feminism was what I grew up in, in absolutely within my home, especially. And therefore, I did grow up incredibly ambitious and focused on my career. My identity was deeply attached to being this journalist. Amy Taylor, at the time, Amy Taylor was the ABC journalist. That's my whole sense of self. And so when I fell in love, got married, had my first baby, I found it incredibly hard hard to adjust my sense of self when so much of my identity had been tied up into something that the world acknowledged and then suddenly I was at home doing something the world didn't acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I describe it as when we give birth, we split in two. It's like we have this inner split. One part of us is who we used to be that identity of a strong, independent woman or successful or, you know, perhaps super fit or a traveller, a surfer, whatever you identify yourself as. And then on the other side of that split is you're now a mum. Mm -hmm. And this is all-consuming. Suddenly, you're not so sure about that job. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you feel really differently about the world. And because we don't talk about that split, certainly weren't talking about it 14 years ago, wow. we think internally there's something wrong with us because we don't understand how motherhood changes us completely because, thank you, feminists, but feminism forgot about motherhood. So because we were never spoken to about how motherhood can be valued, how changing your mind about some things that you used to prioritize is okay and actually a blessing. And so for many, many, many years, I struggled with this personally. Uh, I looked around and thought as the journalist, I'm like, surely someone's talking about this. Surely someone's writing about what happens to a woman when she becomes a mother. 
and uh, no one was 14 years ago. I mean, I wasn't even on Facebook back then. Um, there was no social media. There was no conversations. There was no podcasts. There was nothing. There was a few books on how to feed your baby and that was it. Yeah. Um, and so very long story short, I spent a long time trying to answer that. Why did I feel the way I did? How, where did I go? What happened to me? Why do I not want to be a foreign correspondent at the ABC anymore like I thought I would? Mm -hmm. why when I'm home do I feel like I want to be at work and when I'm at work all I want to do is be at home mm -hmm. all of these questions I couldn't answer until literally nine years later two more babies so three kids in total totally burning myself out trying to be a famous you know well yep the you know really well-known successful producer at the ABC and the perfect mum at home with the three kids by this stage, I had trained as a life coach as well because, you know, overachiever <laughs> in my spare time. Um, I'd coached and listened to and interviewed thousands of mums by this stage. I knew the challenges that I had experienced were not just my own. I knew that I was onto something. There's something here about our, our identity that we struggle with. But I couldn't still, couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. I had some solutions, but I didn't know really what had happened to me and to all of these women. And then I was driving around listening to a podcast and uh, heard the word matrescence. And in that moment, matrescence was described as this transition, just like adolescence is the transition from child to adult and doesn't happen overnight your child doesn't wake up on their 13th birthday and now they're an adult there's a whole period of figuring out who they are now they'll never be a child again but they're not quite the adult they're going to be yet and in that eight ten year period there's so much identity shifting physical of course mental emotional um, hormonal the brain changes all of that but also their deep sense of place in the world, who they identify with, how they dress, what music are they going to draw, be drawn to? All of this creates a statement to the world, right? You've got teenagers. It's, yeah. it's a statement of who I am. Mm -hmm. Matrescence is the same. Yeah. Just as when we give birth or we pee on a stick and see two lines, we're not immediately a mother. Mm -hmm. There is a period of transition where we're not who we used to be, but we don't fully know who we are yet. Mm -hmm. And it takes 7, 10, 20 years to figure this out. And so that inner split that we feel of, I'm not who I used to be, but I don't know who I am anymore, is actually 100% normal and natural, just like an adolescent struggles are 100% normal and natural. And when I heard that, without sounding cliched it was like a light oh, went on yeah. after a decade of trying to yeah I, I it sobbed, had a name. sobbed I mean when we can it name it name. we can address it right like it. it's so much about the way we think is built in linguistics and you know knowing that it had a name was you know it's it, it's it's like every, everything when we can name it and articulate what it is that thing then you've got something to hang your hat on Yes, and it normalises it. I don't know if any of your listeners have had the experience where you know you're not feeling right. You know there's something physically not right and you've been trying to figure it out and you've been doing a few different things and it's been a bit of a process. Mm -hmm. And then you finally get a diagnosis. And even though the diagnosis might not be great news, there's a sense of relief that now I know what this is, I know what to do with it. Yes. That's what matrescence gives to women. It is, oh, so it's not postnatal depression or it's not I just need to get my shit together or yeah. I'm a bad mum. Yes, There's which is usually here. what women default to so often. I'm a bad mum, mm -hmm. absolutely. When we have a word, we can start saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just this thing. What can I do about it? And so that is, I guess, the basis of what, I do now. So I don't work directly with mums as much as I used to. Um, that was a very conscious decision um, because I felt in the end that matrescence 
and this is a bit, you know, spiritual here for a moment, but I do feel very blessed that for some unknown reason, I seem to have been given this gift Mm -hmm. to share this word. Um, Even though it is starting to spread far and wide, and I'm so excited about that, it was, I was able to be one of the first to travel to New York and, and work with the um, really the mother of modern matrescence, Dr. Aurelie Athen. And so the more I learned, the more I realized that this has the potential to change the world. I truly believe that understanding matrescence has the potential to change so much. And we can talk about that in a moment. Yeah. And so when I, the more I learned about that and then working directly with Dr. Athen, I realized that I could, um, step back from trying to hold all the mum's hands myself Mm. and instead empower and support others to go out and hold the hands. And then that's how we create the ripple effect of the change we really need to see in this world. Absolutely. Oh, (sighs) that covers up for the most part (laughs) my question on how did you come to do this work? And, you know, that is just such a, you know, such a a journey for you personally that has Mm. become a public journey and and one that has just and continues to help so many people around the world you know and it was a hundred percent a personal journey as I said I I so struggled with first-time motherhood like it 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 broke me Mm. um I was such a confident person in my own strength And when that went so badly, I totally lost belief in myself. And and so it's been the biggest self-development program of my life. (laughs) And what I I saw then was that the things that helped me move through that, I then started sharing with others. And I remember, Sharon, when I was first running my first group programs years and years ago, I'd finish a call. I think it was on Skype back then. I can't even remember how we used to do it um, or a webinar platform that's not even (laughs) available anymore or something. And I'd come downstairs and I'd say to my husband at the time, oh, my God, it's working. Like, oh, my God, they they're getting the same benefit I did. I think I'm onto something here. Mm -hmm. Like it was this total tried and tested like just there's a spaghetti again Mm. and then what I saw over the years was there was always the same steps there was always the in a in a way we call it in memorizing the formula and no matter what she was experiencing whether she was struggling with guilt about going to work whether she was really struggling in her relationship whether she didn't know if she wanted to have another baby or not whether she felt guilty because she'd had to have a cesarean and all she ever wanted and all her sisters and everyone's only had natural births, whatever it was that she was struggling with, the steps we walked through were always the same. Mm -hmm. And that's then what I worked with Dr. Athenon and um, sort of kept testing and testing and testing and testing. And then that's what is the trademarked Mummerizing coaching training. Within Mummerizing, you definitely learn general coaching skills that yeah. all of us would know if you've ever been coached or done any coaching and training you learn a heap around the feminist movement the motherhood studies gender studies um which i love that bit being the journalist mm. but you also learn this very unique way of supporting a woman a woman through matrescence no matter what you do with women with mothers because I think so often Dr. Athen and I often talk about one day our hope is we will have whole departments of universities dedicated to matrescence. Mm. That when you go into your GP, he will look at your symptoms and what you're there for through the lens of matrescence, just as he would always look at your teenager through the lens of adolescence. Yeah. So I think you can do a generalized coaching training, and I did. Mm. You can do a generalized yoga teacher training, meditation teacher training, um, corporate coaching, HR, whatever it is. Doula training. 
all the training in the world, but we have to understand that she's going through a unique time in her life where there are different things at play than if you were talking to a woman who wasn't going through matrescence with young children. So um, I think that's what is really powerful with this is that there's this particular lens we can bring to a woman that matrescence is able to provide that really changes things dramatically for her. Mm, I love that. On that journey, Amy, I mean, what came first, the chicken or the egg? With, with the life coaching, was it that you were coached through that? Did you seek out this, the support of a coach through that? Or was that just a, a choice, as you say, a high performer and you're like, oh, I want to I want to do this thing on the side? What was it that came first that had you leaning into life coaching? Yes, I started um, after the birth of my second child, two years after the first, um, the ABC started to um, ask me to start writing a blog about motherhood. So I started writing and reflecting on motherhood a lot, but it was very journalistic based, you know, research shows or I'd interview someone on, um, I don't know, pregnancy or birthing skills. It was a very much sort of that journalist approach. And then I had a national radio um, segment around it. And so that was all very much where I thought I would land. It was always going to be the journalist. And then... I uh, had a surprise third pregnancy and the uh, wheels began to fall off my life a little. Physically, emotionally, relationship-wise, it just, I always say that baby had to come along because I didn't learn the first two. The third one had to come and, you know, really sit me on my ass. <laughs> and uh, I really, <laughs> I really um, found myself you know, probably for the second time in my life, really unsure of who I am and what I want to do. The first time was after the birth of my first daughter. And then the second time was that struggle with the third pregnancy. And so, um, you know, interesting story, of course, the universe plants us exactly where we're meant to be, just like mm -hmm. you and I at that um, expo yeah. at the right time. Um, one of the magazines I was writing for at the time sent me to an event to cover it. And it was a stage of four women, all life coaches. And I was a cynical ABC journalist who was like, oh, these 25-year-old life coaches, what are they going to teach about life? You've got to be kidding me. Like, I was so <laughs> not interested, like rolling my eyes, like, for God's sakes, you guys haven't even lived yet. <laughs> and I was sitting there and there was four of them and they were all pretty absolutely amazing actually but there was one in particular and I and I don't know and she knows this and I don't know what it was about her but I couldn't keep my eyes off her everything she spoke I was like wow like far out that's just landed mm -hmm. and I just I was drawn to her she was much younger than me and really had no life experience compared to mine but had this way which is what we know about coaching mm -hmm. this way of of asking these questions and just prompting this thought and then dropping this little nugget. And I was like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks later, I found myself really overwhelmed with decisions and what I was going to do. And so I sent her an email, I think at like midnight, and said, I heard you speaking a few weeks ago. You know, I've never done coaching. Can I work with you? And um, never turned back. I don't think I've ever been without a coach since. And that was nearly nine years ago. Yeah. So, so when I talk about coaching certification and coaching training, I think that helps to know how cynical I was, you know, that it helps to know that I used to think this industry was full of kind of unqualified yeah. self-help junkies. I did too. You know, I or, was the same. <laughs> that's it. Or Tony. Tony Robbins type of thing. Yes, like lots an of American rah -rah. white guy telling me that I need and telling me that I need to just get up earlier and stick to my goals and motivate myself because otherwise you're never going to get what you want in life. Mm -hmm. And so I really came to this industry with great skepticism. Mm -hmm. And even when I finally decided to leave the ABC and do this full time. I didn't tell anyone I was life coach for years. When people would say, what do you do? I'd say, oh, I'm a former ABC journalist. And because <laughs> I was like, and, and now I do some freelance work at home. I, I, I didn't, wow. it's, 
Yes. And so it's really important to me. And now I know that this is what I'm meant to do. I absolutely freaking love coaching. Mm -hmm. Like it is soul filling. I love this work so much. I love seeing the transformation. I love asking the questions. I love listening and pointing out things that she hasn't seen herself. I absolutely love this work. So to now I'm trying actually not to tear own. up at this point. <laughs> if you can see me on the video, I'm starting to uh, I'm starting to weep uh, because I feel all of that. I feel all of that um, as soul work. You know, it's actually yeah. such deep, incredible work where you get to be in the intimate spaces, in you know, and shine lights on the dark corners in people's thinking. Um, it's a it, privilege. It's, it is such it's an, a privilege. It's an absolute privilege. And I have already spoken about the ripple effect a little, but I think what I love about it so much is, as you said, the intimate transformation and also, you know, the activist in me, the journalist revolutionist in me is like, and the power of what happens when a woman finally knows herself and steps up. Oh, gives me goosebumps and when you see your client your group whoever you're working with like change before your eyes and start claiming who they are and having that conversation or making that decision goosebumps all down my body I mean this is what we need in the world is activated women and mothers in particular in my humble opinion we need these women to see their value stop hiding stop apologizing stop saying yes to things they don't want to do because they're worried they're going to be overlooked all of that when you witness that oh, like that is the best feeling it really is, it really yeah. is. and it's such a privilege to be in those spaces when there's those moments in time that are as you say, turning points in that woman's life or that person's life, but also turning point in their family's lives and their community. It just ripples out in so many ways. It's it's a really it beautiful really does. thing. Yeah. Who is, we, we sort of talked about that idea of, you know, where there was a time where you felt, you know, shamed about being a life coach and you really mm -hmm. hid that. I mean, I guess we've, we've kind of really touched on that is that change for you to come out of the coaching closet. I came out of the coaching closet in May last year and it was a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I had to stick my head out and say, I'm here, I'm out of the closet. This is what I'm actually doing. So I can fully relate to that story. You know, I mean, from going from that person who was, you know, sort of a former ABC executive producer, um, aka closet life coach, <laughs> to, to going to, you know, somebody who now runs an international coaching federation recognized coaching training program, like that's pretty big. I want to know, you know, it was obviously those spaces that, you know, being in those privileged positions of seeing those changes that those people were making. Why has it been so important for you to continue on this path that you now have a certified International Coaching Federation recognised training program for coaches? Yeah, I love this question because the ICF accreditation process is excruciating. So to have gotten that, I've asked myself <laughs> that a number of times. Like, why are we And, and I kind of knew that, which is why I wanted to ask you the question, because I know that they don't just add anybody to that list. It's a pretty rigorous situation and lots of hoops to go through. Yeah. What, with so many certifications popping up here, there and everywhere now, why has this been something that you have wanted to do? First and foremost, coaching mums is not taken seriously. It's just not. Boom. It's there it is. That's like a mic drop is. moment for me. <laughs> That's it. And it comes and back to the whole, the whole thing, again. right? It's like it's your work yeah. in a nutshell, but it's, like, it's not important. That's it. I saw it over and over again. Mm. You know, what do you do? I'm a coach for mums. Oh, what do you mean? What? what do you coach them in? Like breastfeeding? No. <laughs> being a mother is more than that 
it's it's about her identity and how she trans transitions from who she used to be to being a mum or how she transitions back into the workplace mm. where workplaces don't acknowledge that you're a mum but you still have to be a perfect mum at home i think <laughs> this is not to be ego sounding at all but i you know i do have big goals for this work i think the potential as we said of when a woman stops beating herself up and thinks that she should just be doing better through these years because there's this perfect model out there of balancing motherhood and life. When we change that, there is amazing potential, but no one was taking it seriously. I couldn't get podcasts on businesses to listen to me. I mean, I know how to pitch a story. I was a journalist for a really long time. And if I can't get... I don't know, the Sydney Morning Herald to take this seriously to talk about how burnt out mums are trying to prove to the world that they aren't mums, then what are we going to, how are we ever going to change this? And I knew it was a fact. I've got literally over 5,000 women who have gone through my programs. As Dr. Appen used to say to me, Amy, you could have a PhD in this by now if you'd actually done this through a university. Mm -hmm. But no one was taking it seriously, Sharon. Like even, to be totally honest, even me at the beginning Mm. you know and we can look at that through a cultural lens motherhood is ignored it's not studied there's like two or three motherhood studies degrees in the world that's it how can the very core of life not Mm. have whole universities dedicated to it Mm. how do we know less about what happens to a woman as she births and becomes a mum in the following years than we know about anything else like it's just mind-blowing as the director of the motherhood center in new york told me when i was there if this was happening to men we would have phd level understanding all Mm. over the world Mm. and so when i knew the potential of this formula and i could see what this could do matrescence and the way that um, we coach women through matrescence Um, becoming an ICF recognized training just became imperative because we want to be in boardrooms. We have an amazing coach in America who's convinced that she's going to be on the floor of um, parliament one day (laughs) in the White House making noise. We've got corporate HR managers in the training who are building new maternity leave policies Mm -hmm. that support the women differently. Like we've got a lot of work to do and it needed to be taken seriously. And that meant a lot of work on your part and your team's part to get that to happen. <laughs> My I team. Oh, look, big shout out to the most amazing team that I have. Um, none right? of this, yeah, and none of this would be possible without them. Um, and, you know, we've only just begun. That's, yes, the next step is now to take, to make the corporate and workplace and government agencies listen to this as well. So, yeah Mm. (laughs) here we come world (sighs) I mean this is just it's so inspiring Amy like it is so incredibly inspiring and I've been fortunate to work with certified mama mama rising you know facilitator trainers and you know people who have been through your program and just you know what they ripple out is you know, it's just incredible. Like their contribution to places and spaces is just a testament to the work that you've done. And, you know, I I can really feel that in, you know, I can really feel that in the depths of my bones that this needs to be in universities the world over. This needs to be on the parliament floor in Australia, in every country, in the White House, everywhere, um, because it is so important. It's so important for the planet, you know, for policy for you know for human life um that's well that's right because if we if we value motherhood differently we start to value everything differently like let's just take workplace which is one of my big fights at the moment you know we if we begin with the mothers around maternity leave and then of course we have to look at the partner's leave paternity leave we have to look at parental leave and then we look how What about caring for elderly parents? Mm. We start shaking up the whole way we look at a human being in the workplace. And post-COVID, that is so needed. You know, as you would know just as well as I, there's a great resignation happening around the world because everyone's like, 
I am not willing to do this anymore for a paycheck. Mm-hmm. I need balance. I need my health. I need to see my loved ones. I can't sacrifice my life for this job anymore. Yeah. And no amount and of money often compensates for that either. It's worth worth walking away from. You know, I had this yeah. conversation as a former teacher myself with, with, you know, with some friends, you know, who have walked away from the profession as well. And, you know, I've had to make some tough decisions around my own children's schooling as a result of the current climate. And, you know, decisions I never, ever thought I would make. And, you know, I think that that's the thing. It's like no amount of money is going to get us the balance of life that is the thing that actually matters, you know? That's like right. That's what's more important. I mean, you can pay teachers, you know, squillions of dollars, but unless you give them, you know, a, a reasonable and fair workload, yes, the mass yes. resignation is going to keep coming. And, you know, I, I, I'm so glad that the pandemic has made people wake more up about this. Yes. <laughs> you know, something that and I, I think- was, and you were fortunate enough to work out, you know, a while back and you know it's just it makes such a difference to family life and motherhood that's right and I think you tapped on touched on something really powerful there which is we're talking about gender equality in the workplace a lot more we're talking about the pay gap and the motherhood penalty and all of these things where the language and the we hope the intention is beginning to be there and that's why I'm so excited for for all these mama rising coaches and facilitators because workplaces need these things at the moment but what they're not realizing is as you said you can throw as much money at her as she wants as you think she wants she's not going to say yes no. recently i was talking to a very very high ranked successful woman in corporate sydney uh, recently single mum of two kids she has dropped her hours down to 4 hours or 4 days a week kind of taken a sidestep and her company just keeps throwing more money at her like can we have you step back in here's some more here's some more and she said to them it's not about the money I don't I don't want any more money and she said to me Amy because if I take that money I know they're going to take their pound of flesh and I'm not willing to do that anymore yeah I don't want the money comes with too much responsibility I can't I won't and that's what I think I know I get on my high horse about this, but that's why I think matrescence has the power to change things because what it does is, first of all, make her realise that the decisions she's making at the moment are okay. Mm. There's a reason why she doesn't want that money and that responsibility. She's not failing. She's not lazy. She hasn't lost her drive or her ambition. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong with her. It's okay. She'll still be successful. So we really talk directly to her and that's the coaching formula we use in Mama Rising. Mm -hmm. But then also we've got um, templates and presentations in Mama Rising where you can go to workplaces and say, this is what matrescence is and this is why you need to know. So within the training, we have almost like three streams. One is for the entrepreneur your audience, the ones that are building businesses, working with mums, perhaps coaches, healers, Mm -hmm. exactly. Consultants, Consultants, yes. Um, The second is what we call birth workers. So they're Mm -hmm. the doulas, the midwives. We have a lot of midwives, a lot of doulas, um, lactation consultants, pre and postnatal yoga teachers, those, that community. And the third is corporate, the ones that want to go into the workplaces or maybe want to run trainings and things like that. So we have resources for however you want to to share this because we need it everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, So I I think we've we've we have touched on the people who the program's for, but one of the questions I wanted to ask is, is the program suitable for people who are absolutely brand new to business? I mean, it, my listeners tend to be those coaches, healers, consultants, online business. You know, is is the program appropriate for somebody who's like, actually, I would really like to become a coach or maybe start that up as something on the side as they transition to find a better balance in their career? 100%. This is our fourth year of running Mama Rising. Only the first year it's been recognised by the ICF, but this is the fourth round. And in the last three, I would guess at probably 
of the women who have enrolled in Mama Rising and gone on to create many different versions of success did it because they listened to my podcast, they read my book, they've never thought about being in business, they had a job or they're a stay-at-home mum, they heard it, they were like, now I know I need to do this too. I want to be a part of this change. And so they signed up for Mama Rising as their first step. So mm-hmm. yes, traditionally, I think about half have always done that. And um, I'll just add our little Yes, please do. That, that's a beautiful segue. I love that. Oh, that was <laughs> going to be my next thing because that's exactly the point, isn't it? It's for people who are brand new in business, there's a beautiful opportunity for them with the Mummerizing certification this time around. Yes. So in the past, we've included a lot of business training within the coaching certificate or the coaching training, uh, partly because of the ICF requirements but also partly acknowledging that there are women in this training who have a coaching business already they're very very successful healers yoga studio owners um, entrepreneurs and they want to do mama rising to add this unique understanding of motherhood to their skills they don't need all of the business uh, support whereas others as I said are absolutely brand new full of passion and vision but are right at the beginning. So this time the training is divided into the five-month certification program and you have an opportunity to add an extra month on to be coached by (laughs) Sharon. (laughs) Which I'm I'm so so excited excited about. about (laughs) I know. And the reason I've done this is obviously I've built a business. That's what I'm here for. Um, but it is not my jam. Um, I can definitely coach and reflect on what I, has worked for me. I'm really passionate around mindset of business, and I know you are too. But in terms of the nuts and bolts of how to start, I started nine years ago by watching YouTube clips on how to build my WordPress. Um, and to be honest, I don't listen to marketing and business podcasts it's not my thing my passion (laughs) is feminism motherhood matrescence so when we were thinking the team and I were thinking about adding this beautiful business module which we have called building change we really wanted to find a business coach to step in and do that part of the training with us for us someone who lives and breathes this thing which of course was you yay (laughs) Uh, look, it's just going to be such a ride. Um, and and because for, for the listeners, because I haven't actually done the Mama Rising certification, I will also be a student. So I will be Mama Rising alumni, which I'm very excited about, and walking the path with the, you know, the next the next group of people to go through this fabulous program. And, uh, and then for those who want to build change um, with me, then they've got that opportunity to have that, have that as an add-on to, to the certification. Yeah. And my passion is listening to those big business and marketing podcasts. So um, that's it. That I love to listen to, but there's also um, very much a feminist activist inside of me as well um, that has this work speak so deeply to, you know, to me as a person, as a mother, um, but also just as somebody who's always is uh, being you know outspoken when it comes to women's rights uh you know I became the yeah. uh the women's fed rep uh in um my school at the ripe old age of 22 when I was first appointed months after I started in my very first year of teaching and I was the the women's contact person for staff <laughs> oh, I love it uh and 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 you know and that was it that was that was it <laughs> But see, there's that thread again. It was always leading. This is what I love to point out to women who are like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or I don't know where I'm going with my business. I'm like, I've often said, it's like you're creating a jigsaw puzzle Mm. and eventually one day all the pieces are going to fit together and make sense. But at the moment you've got this random piece over there and you don't know what that's going to do and you've got this skill that you had when you were 20 and don't think that's relevant anymore. But actually, in the end, it all creates this really beautiful picture that is your unique space in this, no matter what you're doing. Um, 
Can I add something about the business module building change please quickly, Sharon? Do. Yeah, please. Because we've had we've had a number of um, questions from potential students because the five month. Um, coaching certification has um, assessments that you need to hand in. Now, I will say, please don't be scared of those. It's not a uni degree. We're not going to give you a grade. It's basically like uh, reflections on how the work is affecting you. We just want to see whether you're getting it, how is it moving you, what would you like to say to a mum about it, those types of things. A number of people are asking if they choose to do the business module, is that also assessed? So I want to say really clearly, no, this is yours to access forever. You know, you can come, Sharon has packed it full of amazing things. So you probably will want to come back to it over and over again. Yeah. Um, maybe you can share in a moment some of the things you're putting in there, but there is no assessment for the business module. There's no pass or fail. This is for you to use and work through if, when and how you want to, just to mm -hmm. clarify that. Yeah, um, absolutely. You won't be assessing, but lots of feedback available to people who, who yes. do take that option. So, you know, even if it's somebody who perhaps has started doing some coaching but doesn't feel rock solid, um, you know, they still have that opportunity to get feedback from me. There's the opportunity in the Facebook group that I'll be in there. Um, also, there's a coaching call opportunity to ask me questions. Um, but, you know, some of the things that we'll be covering in that building change module are really fundamental to get your ducks in a row and they're things that in businesses I'm sure you've experienced Amy with every new layer as we you know as we shed our skin and move and grow into the next level those foundational things are relevant at every single level in your business it's not 100%. done once and park it it is literally foundational stuff that you need to revisit and revisit and revisit and revisit with every new skin that you grow into. And like mm -hmm. Amy said, on this entrepreneurial journey, we've both, you know, experienced, tried out, experimented with such a range of things. But geez, I wish back in the beginning, somebody had said, here's the tools that you, if you just keep coming back to these handful of things that you're going to be able to know how to breathe and expand in that new skin really confidently and quickly instead of, you know, floundering, because I know for a long time that's what I did. Whereas if somebody had said, do these things, mm. um, so, you know, things like getting really clear on our message, identifying our unique space in the marketplace and I think that's really relevant when we're talking about um, you know even just to take that example of life coach a mother life coach for mums right like a lot of my listeners a lot of my clients are in that space and the question often is is how do I stand out from the crowd what's unique about what I have compared to the next life coach who's for mums but there are layers there that we can dig into and scratch away and find what it is and often that relates to parts of our own unique story. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so that's another part of that training is what is it about your own unique story that you can find the threads and pull them together that is that tapestry that you can, you know, take for people and, and present that body of work. Um you know, getting things set up, those really foundational things around, like once we've done the message, you know, things like um, getting our social media set up and just being able to find solutions to get our message out there that aren't going to cost an arm and a leg if you're in startup business, but also if you've got the, the money there to invest, then you've got other options as well. But sometimes just knowing those things is it's just a game changer. Yes, it's a bit like the coaching formula that we share within Mama Rising. No matter what you're dealing with, it's always these steps. Like even processing a divorce in the last few years, it was the same steps I had to use to get myself through that transition. And it's the same with what you're talking about in business. Whether you're a startup, 100,000, a million, the same things will always have to be checked back in with. And I love that about the way both you and I approach this. You know, mm -hmm. we're not telling you how to, you know, do these three steps and you've got your first sale. This is more about foundations that you put in place so you can always come back to that. I love it. Yeah. It's going to be I amazing. Think, 
you know, I mean, one of the ways that I work, Amy, and I know that this was um, probably the deal maker, um, was that, you know, I talk a lot in, you know, working in our feminine and our masculine and, you know, very much, you know, that's exactly what that is, is having those pillars that we can anchor into when we are swirling. And as feminine core beings, we can be inclined to do that a little bit. Um, but, you know, just having those pillars there just to bring us back to, right, what are the checkpoints? What are the things I need to check off and get clear around so that I can move forward with confidence as I grow a business? And, you know, for those people who are new on their journey, or, you know, that it hasn't quite landed yet. They might have quite a few balls in the air before it all has a big bow tied around it. Um, you know, that's really always helpful to keep coming back, keep coming back. So, um, yeah. you know, I can't I wait. Agree. I'm so I know. Thank you for being a part of it. It's going to be, I really feel it's a, a match made in heaven. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Very, very thank exciting. You. So, um so we're going to tell you shortly how we can, how you can check this out for people who are new to Amy's work. Um, but before we do, Amy, I ask my guests three questions. Um, so uh, I'd love to ask you these before we do jump off. Uh, how would your parents describe what you do for a living? I think my dad could probably describe my work better than me because he is my number one diehard fan he opens every one of my newsletters and teases me because I always address my newsletters beautiful hey hi beautiful Sharon and so he always jokes and says to me oh you know your email always makes me laugh Amy it's always hi beautiful Ray and so my <laughs> He literally will text me and say how's your numbers going how's the launch oh, so no he God. is all over it all oh, over it. my mom. What amazing support. That is just fabulous. It is fabulous. It's a little annoying at times. I think I'd rather, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but no, it's beautiful. And my mum, my mum would know, my mum would describe, um, well, she is where I got my deep love for self-development. She took me to hear Louise Hay when I was 10 years old. Um, she is a healer, a natural therapist. So no, both my parents know and support me 100%, which has been amazing. That's fabulous. You're, I think you're the mm. first official guest <laughs> that I've ever had who's been able to answer that question and actually say, no, no, my parents actually know what I do. So, oh, good. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. Hats off to the folks there. And Amy, what has been your most joyous part of your life and business journey to date? Um, uh, I mean, life watching my children find their own sense of self and their own personalities and overcoming their own challenges and blossoming into these human beings that they are is just every mother knows how special that is, especially now they're getting a bit older and seeing them emerge in the world as their own people. The greatest business sort of um, moments have definitely been... Um, in the process of this setting up this mama rising training and hearing the success of the coaches mm -hmm. and how they are now finding their own community and their own mums and seeing, like I've mentioned a number of times, that ripple effect of really, really feeling like it's bigger than me now. You yeah. know, this isn't my business. This isn't my idea. This is and we talk about that a lot in Mama Rising. I am not interested in having clones around the world. This is a formula a bit like the masculine and feminine. We give you a structure, but we totally want you to own this in your own way. And getting on calls with those Mama Rising coaches and they tell me, you know, I took it and I tweaked it and now I'm doing this and I was just interviewed on the radio or, you know, the local postnatal yoga studios invited me to do this and I'm like oh really oh my god that's amazing I love 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 hearing how each of them um are taking this and uniquely putting this out in the world that's the best part absolutely and they're doing such yeah. a wonderful job of it it's a movement they are it is a movement yeah it is it's, a movement it's, it's taken on a life of its own it's got legs and it's it's running in all different yeah. directions and that's what I meant earlier when I said I feel like it chose me. Like this doesn't feel, 
you know, to, to finish on a deeply spiritual note, this does, this doesn't feel like it's mine. It's definitely mm-hmm. ours. And for some reason I got to start it, but there's no way that it's mine at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. bigger than that. So beautiful. Amy, tell us, um, you're launching at the moment, the current round of Mama yes. Rising. Um, yes. For people who would like to become a Mama Rising facilitator, um, particularly anyone who'd like to start a coaching business, if you've been thinking about this, this is perfect for you. And I, the reason I say that, of course, is because of my listeners, but also, you know, perhaps you work in some of those other fields that we've talked about, yoga teachers, you know, working in birthing, um, those sorts of areas as well. If you're a healer, it, basically, if you work with people who are becoming parents, mothers, yes. Um, yes. or if you work in, you know, the human resources area, then this is going to be an amazing program for you. The doors are currently open, Amy? They are, yes. And they close for enrolment on the 26th, Friday, the 26th of August. And then the training actually starts on the 5th of September. Let me say that again, the 5th of September. And the reason why we have a couple of weeks in between is because part of the training, in fact, the feedback is one of the favourite parts of the training is we link you up with a couple of other students in your area or as close to your area as we can. Mm -hmm. And you support each other through that whole experience. You practice coaching with each other. We call them your inner circle. And um, so in those two weeks, it's why the enrolment has to really close on that day because it's an admin challenge to make sure everybody is put in a group where at least you're in the same time zone so you can support each other, then you share each other's emails. So when we start on the 5th of September, you've got your support group ready to go. And those support groups over the years have turned into like lifelong friends. It's phenomenal what comes out of those groups. It's one of the parts I love as well. I have heard wonderful things about those groups, actually. So yeah, they're I'm amazing. Very excited to see <laughs> that in action. And, and I, you know, I just love that because I think that that's what makes a, a community. And, you know, when you're in memberships, programs, training courses, you know, it's one thing to be a soloist going through that on your own journey but it's another thing to feel like you're a member of a community where you've got that kind of support from other participants you know from other students in that program rather than you know just teach or or facilitator to student it's a really beautiful thing so um yeah and I think after two years of everyone being on zoom we really are not interested in going out on our own anymore we want to feel community we want to talk maybe even catch up in person although most of them aren't able to do that um there's accountability there there's um freak out space there's you know practice there's all of it and it's a core part of what the training is we don't want it to be this click and collect kind of experience it's really important because what we're doing is we're building a village yeah with each other first and then with other mums so Mm -hmm. it's a really important part Mm. and you had an amazing retreat earlier this year with your with your certified our first it is our plan to do one every year from now on where we gather our memorizing coaches and facilitators um the first one obviously still sort of crawling out of covid um so not everyone from around the world could join yeah. but that's definitely our hope and maybe even running a few so running one in the uk and trying to get to america as well because again I mean, the videos and uh, if you jump on the website for Mama Rising, you'll see some of the videos of the women and um, when they all finally, when we all finally got together in one room, there were a lot of tears. Yeah. Yeah. We're a very, very close community. Yeah. We have to be. We've got big work to do. Absolutely. And it's all about that, all about that community and that movement. So, um, so Amy, it's open at the moment. It does close next Friday week, which is the 20... 6th of August 2022 if you're listening to this in the future if you go to the link that's in the show notes then I'm sure that there will be a wait list that you can register your interest for the next round so um, but if you're thinking about this please do check it out I'm going to pop the link in the show notes Amy where can everybody find you on Instagram where do you hang out online and, and your podcast obviously 
Yes, Instagram is Amy Taylor Cabaz. My website is amytaylorcabaz.com. But also um, I would invite everybody to look at mamarising.net. This Mm -hmm. is our certification platform where you can search for coaches in your area. So once you're accredited, you have a profile on there. So women anywhere around the world can jump on. There's also specialties on there. So if you're really wanting to focus on pregnancy loss, struggling after a miscarriage and how matrescence has changed you through loss then we have specialist coaches listed on there so have a look over that see what amazing work we're doing around the world and my podcast is the happy mama movement love it love it lots of happy thanks, coming up around the world thanks to your work amy i'm so excited wishing you all the best no. for the current launch And um, I just can't wait to be a part of that community as a learner, but also um, as the business and mindset coach when it gets to that building change um, course module in February, March 2023. So thank you for having me as a part of your program. It's such an honour. And um, and thank you for the work on behalf of mothers everywhere uh, for the work that you continue to do. It's just it's just amazing stuff. Thanks, beautiful. Yeah, and thank you for being a part of it as well. It's going to be amazing. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amy.